Hello one and all, welcome to Scene Through Glass. At the end of last year, I made a video called Driving to Italy to Buy a Pizza. Well today, I'm going to be flying to Italy to test drive a car. And it is not just any car, it's a car that I am stupidly excited about. The brand new Alfa Romeo Giulia. However, I'm going to have to do it all in just over 24 hours because tomorrow night I need to be back here in London for a wedding. So, my bags are packed, I've got a countdown timer on my phone letting me know just about when I run out of time to film, and we've got to get to the airport. Yes, the factory is closed. And so here we are in what can only be described as one of the biggest hotels in the world. It is really nice to be back in Italy. However, I am still quite far away from the Giulia. And if we check the old countdown timer, I have less than 24 hours now to document and film this car. And currently I'm in a hotel about 30 minutes away from Alfa Romeo's HQ. So, I think I'm going to have a coffee, a shower, get some dinner, and then get prepping and ready for tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to a beautiful day in Northern Italy. We have just arrived at Bolocco, which is the test track for Alfa Romeo. And I'm not entirely sure how today is going to work. First things first, all the bloggers are getting their hands on the Giulia around the test track. Then there's a lunch break and then this afternoon is when the Giulia gets to go out on the road. However, that's when I need to leave. I'm leaving at lunch to get back to this damn wedding. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be able to film. I'm just going to try and capture as much as possible in the just under five hours I have left until I need to depart. The Giulia is just over there. It is looking awesome and I am stupidly excited. S-I-N-K Yes, that's it. I really fell in love with Alfa Romeo when I had my 4C last year and in recent months especially, I've really been missing that little car so when the guys at Alfa gave me a call to did I want to come down and test drive the new Julia, even though logistically it would be a massive headache, I couldn't say no. Even being here at Bolocco, it's just so Italian and for me, Italian cars are the best. So first things first, we are going for a passenger ride in this, the top of the range, 2.9 by turbo, 510 brake horsepower, Contrafolio, Julia. Ah! My God, I feel awake now. That car feels like a complete powerhouse. Oh, sounds good, sounds really good, but the thing that impressed me the most from the passenger seat, it's very hard to tell from the passenger seat, is just how stable and good it felt through the corners. As I say, I'm so tight on time, so I apologize for the awful filming and documenting of that hot lap. They were literally like, get in and go. So I was like, ah! Um, so hopefully for the next drive, I will get a few more angles for you guys, but that may be, my only experience with the Contrafolio because 
we're so tight on time, but I will try and wangle some more time with it if I can. Anyway, waiting for my co-driver to get back and then I believe we're taking this white car out for a drive. Lovely. So yes, we are now in this white car, which I've been led to believe on. I've been told, is a two litre diesel. So an immediate change from the Contrafolio, which was such an animal, I'm still on a bit of a come down. What I love though, is even though we're in the diesel, you still get these massive shifter paddles, which I think is one of the coolest things ever. They're properly Ferrari. Anyway, there is an eight speed gearbox in this car, which is very similar to the Jag, and I've been led to believe also very similar to BMW. So hopefully I'm gonna feel right at home. And we're just going to go for a little bit of a cruise. Alla fine della oh, strada. oh, that's helpful. Italian sat nav. Definitely not going to get lost. Very similar to my old 4C, you get the DNA system. So let's come out of dynamic and go back into a sort of normal. I've forgotten already what DNA all means. I think A was, oh, it's got names. I'll look it up and I'll tell you later. So yeah, the main thing that I've picked up from sitting here for all of three minutes is how much I love these gear paddles. I know it's such a tiny thing, but they are metal, so they feel great and they're huge. And it just immediately makes you think you're in a much sportier car than maybe you are because this is a two litre diesel, I think. They said it had 180 brake horsepower. Again, I probably should have read up on some bits before I started filming this, but today is all a little bit last minute. This trip is all a little bit last minute. But anyway, we're going on a small adventure in the new Julia. We've just pulled over because there are a few bits on this car that I actually want to show you, which are quite hard to do when I'm driving because it's actually also illegal. Um, so I'm first going to get up all the information so I actually know what I'm talking about rather than just making up stats and show you bits on the interior because for me that is what makes this car a major contender. So I honestly think this is one of the nicest interior cabins for a saloon that is on the market. I mean, obviously I am a massive Alfisti nerd so I am going to love it but let's just bang on one more time about these paddles. Look how bloody huge they are! I feel like I want a poster of these paddles. I'm touching them a bit too much, but yeah, they, they are definitely, for me, the biggest thing. But just the interior quality in general, the leather, the design, the layout. I'm jumping here, aircon's not on, so I'm gonna start sweating. You have the two dials there, then you have like an electric bit here, which is all your speed. You've got the infotainment system. The coolest thing as well, look at the start-stop button. How cool is that? What a diesel saloon. I just think it is so, so cool. And for me, it is all those elements which tie together to make this car so much more exciting than its rivals because other diesel saloons on the market just feel like they've been put together with well, the cheapest parts is harsh, but generic parts. This feels inherently sporty and has more character and more pizzazz. So I've enjoyed it a lot. I think now we head back to HQ and see if I can get my hands on the Contrafolio for a little bit more because for me that's the car that gets me super excited in my pants. S -I -N -K. Yes, that's it. Well, it's just a ghost of a chance. It is now time for the main event. As you can see, I've got cameras rigged up everywhere. But I wanted to show you very quickly the interior of the Quadrifoglio. As you can see, we still have the best things about the Julia, the massive shifter paddles. You have a few more uh, driving modes on this one. There's also a race, as you can see, and then some suspension dampening, which is like a bumpy road mode in the Ferraris, or just your normal uh, suspension dampening. Otherwise, it's pretty similar, slightly sportier seats, um, but still all the nice touches which were in the diesel. And I am just excited now to give this a proper go with those massive brakes and obviously the four pipes at the back, which are just going to sound mean. So as soon as the uh, track gets an all clear, 
we are going to be going. I am late for my flight. I was supposed to leave at two, but I think it is worth it for a go in this beast. I don't think we need the mirrors, but I made them anyway. <laughs> Aircon is essential today. <laughs> I'm British and this is very, very hot. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. bloody hot even it's for an Italian, yeah. trust me. Okay, good. I'm not the only one. It's uh, better to be in the with the paddles and manual? As you prefer. Oh, I think I prefer. Is the paddles are so nice. Even yeah. in the diesel, the biggest thing I notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a double clutch, huh? no. it's faster than a double clutch. Wow. Yeah, it feels super sharp. Yeah, it feels mighty quick. Yeah. What time you have the transfer to the airport? About 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> But I was super glad that I had stuck around to test out the Quadrifoglio, even if it was just on track. Me personally, I always prefer to check out cars on the road, so hopefully I'll get a chance to do that at some point with the V6 Julia. The car just felt incredibly impressive though. The day in general was just so rushed that there were a lot of things that I wanted to talk about which I just didn't get a chance to. The infotainment system seemed really good. We had the sat-nav going in the 2.2 litre diesel. It worked great. Uh, lots of connectivity, lots of music, all that sort of stuff. The boot space was great. The rear seats were comfortable. Everything you'd kind of hope for and expect from a saloon in this class. Fundamentally, I think like so many other journalists and bloggers, I am really excited about the Julia. Obviously, the Quadrifoglio is the one for me, um, not to buy, uh, just out of preference. And I can't wait to get that on the roads. Even for like an epic road trip, I just think it is gonna be an absolute bullet. And I'm out of here. I have literally just got in the car. I am 30 minutes late from my departure time, which was kind of worth it jumping in to the Quadrifoglio, but we are in the car and I've got to get to the airport where I will sum up there because, yeah, I'm in a rush. <laughs> And somehow I have made it to the actual airport down to some pretty amazing driving from the man from Alfa Romeo. What a trip, it has been exhausting and a little hectic, but I'm so glad I did it. I'm now checking my flight. Do I have a gate? E B B27, I do. I'm gonna get coffee. Well, you know.